Hey guys, Miss Peterson here. And today we're going to be talking about some of the vocabulary that we use for describing motion. We've already looked at motion with our wind up toy lab, and now we're going to be adding in some vocabulary to that description. So uh, even though we're doing these notes via PowerPoint, I do want you to still set up your notes in the Cornell style, like our first two sets. So your paper um, in your notebook should have the title describing motion, draw a line down the side, and you're going to have the questions here and then be taking the notes for all the slides that are in that similar format. Okay, with that line down the middle. So first thing, how do we describe a change in position? Well, there's actually two terms that we use for quantitatively. That means using numbers, okay, versus qualitatively, which is just describing for quantitatively describing a change in position. The first is distance. This is probably what you guys are used to, okay? When you plug in an address into your GPS, it tells you how much distance you have to cover to get there. It's your total movement, regardless of direction. Normally in units of meters, but could be centimeters, millimeters, kilometers, miles, any unit of distance. Then there's also displacement, okay? So what displacement is, is your overall change in position. Basically, like if you were to draw a straight line from where you start to where you end, that is your displacement, even if you took some roundabout way to get there, okay? So that, it's still a unit of change in position though, so it's still in units of meters, centimeters, or kilometers. For example, if I get up right now and I walk 20 meters to the right, and then 10 meters to the left, how much distance did I walk? Well, I walked 30 meters, okay? 20 meters plus 10, 30 meters. But what is my displacement? My displacement is only 10 meters because at the end of my motion, I am only 10 meters away from where I started, okay? So distance, the total amount you walk, displacement is your overall change in position. Which brings us to another concept that we talk a lot about in physics, which are vectors and scalars. Rather than me tell you, let's listen to it from an expert. Vector. I'm applying for a new villain loan. Go by the name of Vector. It's a mathematical term, a quantity represented by an arrow with both direction and magnitude. Vector! That's me, because I'm committing crimes with both direction and magnitude. Oh, yeah! Check out my new weapon. Piranagon! Oh, yeah! Okay, so that is the difference between scalar and vector okay okay so that's vectors and scalars scalars are measurements that only have magnitude it wouldn't make sense for scalar measurements to have a direction where vectors have both magnitude and direction so if you think about what we just talked about would distance and displacement which one would be a scalar and which one would be a vector? In which of those does the direction of the movement matter? So displacement, the total change, is a vector. It matters what direction you're going. When I went 20 meters to the right and then 10 meters to the left, the right and left mattered. Where for distance, it didn't matter. It didn't matter what direction I went, I just went 30 meters, okay? So that's why displacement is a vector, but distance is a scalar. Another example of a scalar would be mass, okay? If something has uh, 10 kilograms, okay, it's gonna have 10 kilograms, not 10 kilograms right or 10 kilograms left. That doesn't quite make sense, okay? And then later in this lecture, we'll talk about speed and velocity, where speed is the scalar measurement and velocity is the vector measurement. So, in our wind-up toy lab, we talked about the rate of change in position, and we described that as the slope of our graph, okay? It was the velocity, it was the speed of the object. For example, in this position time graph, every second it moves 10 meters. 
so it's moving at 50 meters per second okay in the positive direction so there's two ways that we talk about the rate of change in position the first one is the speed that is the scalar measurement where it doesn't matter what direction you're going it's normally in units of meters per second though as we know it could be kilometers per hour or miles per hour velocity is the rate at which an object changes position and in what direction direction matters when talking about velocity it's still in units of meters per second just think of it as speed and direction okay they're basically the same thing but if you say right or left or positive or negative or north or south then you're talking about a velocity um, typically in physics the standard is that right and up is the positive direction where left and down are the negative directions anything in between that you would need some trigonometry and that's a little bit beyond what we're going to do in this class so for example say i walk 10 meters in 10 seconds to the right and then 10 meters in 10 seconds to the left what speed was i walking at well i was walking at one meter per second that whole time one meter per second to the right and then one meter per second to the left but if we're talking about my velocity, we need to be a little bit more specific. The direction matters. So for my velocity, it would be plus one meters per second for the first 10 seconds, negative one meters per second for the second 10 seconds, because now I'm going in the leftward or negative direction. And if we looked at my average velocity, well, that would just be zero because I didn't actually go anywhere. I ended up right back where I started. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. So what's the equation for that? Here's this equation. It is on your equation sheet, which will be housed in our OneNote. It is that V velocity or speed, if you're ignoring direction, is delta X over T, where delta X means change in, that's what a triangle means in math classes. So change in position, AKA distance, AKA displacement. Sometimes you'll see this term written as a D, where velocity is distance over time, displacement over time. Um, so let's do some examples. On my way to work, I drive 1.2 miles in five minutes. What is my average speed in miles per hour? What about in meters per second? Okay, let's do this. So whenever we do a physics problem, okay, like this, we're gonna do what's called a five step solution. Step one, list out what I know. So my change in position is 1.2 miles or my distance is 1.2 miles. And then that took me 5.0 minutes and I'm looking for my average speed, okay? Note this equation is only for average velocity, okay? and only when things are going at a constant velocity, um, or you're talking about the average velocity. When we have things speeding up or slowing down, we're gonna have to use a different set of equations. But my velocity is my unknown. That's what I'm trying to find. So I can set up my equation, which is velocity equals distance or change in position over time. But we have an issue here, okay? The issue is that I wanted my speed in miles per hour. Miles, okay, not M, M is for meters. So right now I have units of miles and minutes. I'm gonna need to convert that minutes to hours in order to do this. So I have five minutes and we know that there's 60 minutes in one hour. So we're just dividing by five by 60. Got your calculator? Five, di five divided by 60 gives me 0 0.083 hours. Okay, now I'm ready to plug it into my equation. So I have 1.2 miles over 0 0.083 hours. Okay. And I plug that into my calculator and I get 14.4 miles per hour, which we typically write as MPH. 
Now, because both of my knowns only had two digits, I would want to round this and just say 14 miles per hour. Okay. Now, it also asks us, what is that in meters per second? Okay, well, that is another conversion problem. Let's go ahead and try that out. So, I'm just going to start from the 14. Actually, let's start from the information we were given. That might be a little bit better, okay? Then we'll know we have super accurate numbers. So, we have one... 0.2 miles in or per five minutes. Now, if you look back at your notes, you might see that there are 1609 meters in one mile. You don't need to have that number memorized. I'll always give it to you guys if you need it. So, miles and miles cancel out. If I solved it right now, I would know how many meters per minute it is, but I want meters per second. So I know that one minute is 60 seconds. So minutes and minutes cancel out. The units that I'm left with is meters per second, which is cool because that's what I wanted. And then I can plug it into my calculator. I have 1.2 divided by five times 1609 divided by 60, which is 6.436. We round it to two sig figs, so 6.4 meters per second. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Let's do another example. Oh, shoot. It is in the way of the problem. Okay. We'll go ahead and do this next problem on the next slide. Okay, let's look at this example. The International Space Station orbits Earth at a constant v speed of 7,660 meters per second. How long would it take to complete one orbit, which is a distance of 3.5 times 10 to the fifth meters, around Earth? Okay, so we always start with our five-step solution, and step one is to write everything down. Okay, we have our speed, which is v, of 7,660 meters per second okay it's looking for a distance of 3.5 times 10 to the fifth meters and we're trying to solve for time so we're still using this equation but we need to reorganize it to solve for time so first we need to get time out of the denominator we do that by multiplying both sides by time. So then we have time times velocity equals distance. Okay. So to get the time by itself, we divide by velocity or speed in this case and divide by speed. So we have time equals distance divided by speed. Now we're ready to plug in our numbers. Okay. Time equals the distance 3.5 times 10 to the fifth meters divided by that speed 7660 meters per second the meter units cancel out and when you have a denominator on the bottom of the denominator it flips up top so we do have our time in seconds if you're not comfortable and you're unsure how to plug scientific notation into your calculator at this point you could also write that as three five one two three four 350,000 meters, okay. but we can plug it into our calculator. 3.5 times 10 to the fifth divided by 7,660, and we get 45.6919, okay? Since our least precise number that we were given only had two digits, we would want to round our answer to two digits and say 46 seconds, okay? Okay, cool. Okay, cool. So the International Space Station orbits Earth once every 46 seconds. That is insane. Super cool. Okay, let's talk about calculating speed and velocity from a position time graph. 
So here we have a position time graph a little bit more intense than the one that we did in our um, lab, but it gets easy if we break it down into segments. So we have this straight line here that is increasing. Okay, we're gonna call that segment A. We're gonna call this one segment B where it's flat. Then we have segment C and D. So let's start with segment A from zero to three seconds. It goes a distance of six meters in a time of three seconds. So that is a speed of two meters per second, okay? Now in part B, let me switch to a different color here. Use the dark red, nope, blue it is. Okay, in part B, the position graph is flat. Okay, at three seconds, it's at six meters, at four seconds, it's at six meters, and at five seconds, it's at six meters. So its speed is going to be zero. Okay, same since we're looking for segment D. But what about segment C? Okay, so in segment C, it's going from six meters to three meters. So it's going a distance of three meters in one, two, three, four seconds. Okay, but now it's going in the opposite direction. It's going back toward where it started. Okay, so since it has a negative slope and it's going back the other direction, we call it a negative velocity. Okay, and three over four is 0.75. So negative 0 0.75 meters per second. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. One last thing we need to talk about, and that is acceleration. Now, we're only gonna be learning how to qualitatively describe acceleration for now. In future lessons, we'll be able to calculate it and actually put some numbers to it. But right now, all we need to know is that acceleration is the rate of change in the velocity of an object, and it is vectors, a vector measurement. It has a direction, okay? So acceleration can be speeding up or slowing down or changing direction because that's a change in your velocity. Now, if velocity and acceleration vectors are in the same direction, that means that the object is speeding up, okay? Where if the velocity and acceleration vectors are in opposite directions, that means the object is going to be slowing down. Now, it doesn't matter if both of them are positive or both of them are negative, the object is still gonna be speeding up just in different directions. But if one's negative and one po one's positive, no matter what, that object is gonna be slowing down. So let's look at some examples of this. Okay, these are some examples from um, the uh, concept builder that you guys are gonna be working on later this week. And let's see, okay. So for each of these, we're gonna describe its velocity and describe its acceleration. So here we can see that this car is moving to the right. So it has a rightward, or you could say positive velocity. But what's happening to the car as it goes? Well, it's slowing down, okay? You can see when I press play on this, okay, you can see that car slowing down. So the velocity is decreasing, okay? Because the car is slowing down, it does have an acceleration, but the car is moving right, but it's slowing down. So the acceleration must be in the opposite direction, okay? It has a negative, or left word acceleration. Okay, let's look at this next one. Okay, the car is still moving to the right, so we still have that rightward positive velocity. Okay, and note all of these dots are equally spaced and you can see in the animation too that the car is not speeding up or slowing down. 
We call that constant velocity. And when something's moving at a constant velocity, it has no acceleration. It's not speeding up, nor slowing down, nor changing direction. So acceleration is zero. There isn't any. Let's look at this last one. Okay. So we still have a car moving to the right. So it's still going to be a rightward positive velocity. But now it's speeding up. So the velocity is increasing. Okay, and the reason that it's increasing is because the acceleration and the velocity are in the same direction. So it also has a positive or rightward acceleration. And that's all we need to know about describing motion for now. Okay, cool. Okay, cool.